Here is the router sim software with solid sim automatically cutting and nesting parts from SolidWorks in just a few clicks. My first step is to actually start the AutoCAD router sim and issue the import command at which point I'm going to import some assembly files from SolidWorks. These are direct SolidWorks assembly files. I'm going to open those up and when you do that it goes through an import step and in just a few seconds you'll be able to pick on the files and see the components part of the assembly right there from SolidWorks. So once we have those we can now issue a few more commands to take those parts which are come in here and I'm going to issue our solid sim command on those and the feature recognition takes place. Now that feature recognition just found all of the parts and I can use a cut list command to generate the cut list which has my list of parts on there and the materials the part names and the quantities. Now that cut list is also saved as a PDF file. So we have these parts, there's the materials, how many of each, and if they also had backside machining on them. At this point you can also do an expanded view which is nice for assembly purposes. It, it does a uh, like an exploded view for you. So you can make an exploded view and you can rotate the view around. The part numbers are on there. They're designed so you can get uh, part numbers on both sides, so you can take different pictures of the parts and different orientations. But the real power of the solid sim command is that it instantly lays all those parts out flat for us. Now once those are laid out flat, I have all of my geometry on different layers. So here I've got circles and lines and things like this all on different layers. So there's a circle and it's on a layer, it's a circle, it's on a whole through layer has the diameter, it has a thickness. This is all ready to cut with router sim now. Okay, so that's the that's the real power of the uh, solid sim command is it lays all those parts out flat. I'm going to now export those components, pick the export button, it'll create a CSV file with the name of the current drawing. I haven't named this, so it's just going to call it drawing one. Go ahead and replace that and made uh, a folder now with all the parts in there. So the files with today's date and time are in here and at that point I can exit the AutoCAD completely. Notice I haven't issued any real AutoCAD commands, just using the AutoCAD viewing to zoom and, and move around and, and list things out. So here is the Excel spreadsheet that's made. It has the name of the drawing, the material, and the quantity, and then also the panel size. If you're going to run on a point-to-point -point machine, this is useful for the panel size dimensions you're going to cut. Now I do have two different materials here, and um, if we want, we can go and increase the quantities of the parts. If I want to double these, I go ahead and do that. i change some of these values here. Um, let me make these uh, eight, and I'll put four of each of these just to increase the quantity. Save the file, and it's saved as a CSV file. Now, what we could do with that CSV file is you can actually just right-click on that and pick Cut with Router Sim Automation Suite. So it's one click to export all those parts as individual files with components on different layers. And it's just one more click to cut and nest the parts. And that's what RouterSim is doing next. It imported that CSV file, has the name of my part, the material, and the quantity. I could also add other things in the CSV file like label fields. I could put in some label information on there. We go to labels. I can also put in the post processor name, for example, if I want to export it to different machines, I can pick some of the parts to go to one machine and some parts to another machine. I can change the material names, and the material names for router sim are, are really going to be the sheet sizes. So now we see what the layers these things are on, these things on layer cutout or drill. They're drilled and the outside is routed and the inside is cut. This is all happening automatically because that geometry on different layers the solid sim did the feature recognition, found the geometry, put the parts on different layers, gave them a thickness so router sim knows how deep to cut them, and it's generating the single programs for each part. It makes a report that you see popping up. It's an Excel spreadsheet report. So I've made the programs for each one of those parts, and now I'm going to go ahead and nest them 
and I have different size sheets available. So I'm getting part inside of part nesting. Each one of these sheets is saved as a PDF file. I set it up to print uh, or to nest by yield, and I have multiple material sizes. So I have some uh, parts on a 4 by 8, some on a 5 by 10, and some on a 5 by 12. When the job is done, I literally have not done anything with AutoCAD but view or zoom them and move around in the, the drawing view. I imported the SolidWorks parts directly, went right through and exported them as individual files, right clicked on the cut list and cut it with the router sim automation suite. A minute later, I have my results. <clears throat> I've got multiple sheets of G codes here. These are my NC code files. I've got printouts. Uh, that are saved as PDF. There's the nested sheets saved as PDF files. I've got the G code files that are ready to run. These are NC code files ready for any kind of machine. We make post processors for every machine and there's 100% machine ready G codes. I also have my program for each individual part and I have an Excel spreadsheet for the individual part. So here's one part that had two tools happening on there. There were some drilling operations and some routing and there's the two different tools and the tool numbers and how many total inches those those tools cut. So it came up with a cycle time here of about 47 seconds, 46 and a half, and it adds some other variables like machine related downtime and setup and handling, personal fatigue, operator takes a break. All of those variables factor in it comes out to just over a minute for the cycle time now. Even though I programmed a lot of the cuts at 750 inches a minute, the machine had variable feed rates as it went around the turns and did different things. So this little spreadsheet that it comes up with is a very nice cycle time report. It also gives you an estimate of the actual part cost based on the material and your, your machining rate per hour, how many of these you'll get in an hour or a day or hour, uh, complete a yearly quantity that you can plug in here. So this is a very nice spreadsheet that's part of the reporting. Each single part gets a report. Each single part has a separate little program file for it. And each single part uh, is also saved as a, uh, a drawing file if you ever want to make changes to it. There's my little uh, simulation. It ran through the G code and shows the single part. I've got my single part programs right here as well. So they're, they're stored as drawings. They're still 3D solids that you can view and you can change the, the uh, anything you want here. You can pick tool paths up and copy them. Now I'm just using an AutoCAD command to copy. And I'm sure the AutoCAD command is very similar to whatever system you're using now to do copies. However, we feel that the AutoCAD commands are actually better for a lot of these things. The panning, the zooming, the rotating, the erasing. Anything you want to do, you can make changes right to the tool paths. I can even insert uh, or now act interactively with router sim. I can load the software up right here inside the AutoCAD session and insert a table drawing. It's kind of a layout of a typical machine with a 5 by 10 or 5 by 12 table. And if I want to just make a program to cut two of those, I'm just going to pick it up and copy it with AutoCAD's copy command. And uh, I can copy it a specific amount or just visually copy it. I've made some additional holes here. And when I'm ready, I use the router sim command and I sequence those tool paths. And I can either pick the order myself or put a window around everything and I can have it sort the order for me by multiple sorting methods including sort by area so it cuts your smallest pieces first, sort by a rank number. So I have my knowledge is to do drilling are rank one, insides are rank two, outside is rank three. So you can have these uh, rank numbers on here for each of your uh, tool paths. It'll give me the cutting time, including the acceleration, deceleration. It'll make the NC code. It defaults to the same name as the drawing. You could choose a different zero point. You could put locations for your zero, or else use the uh, AutoCAD zero lower left corner there. It resequences the program, makes me the new G code file right here. So I've got uh, that quick. I was able to edit the single part program, make changes to it, resequence it, make a new program. That's the interactive version of router sim. Again, you're not really focusing on AutoCAD commands. I'm just using those to copy parts, move, rotate, zoom. All of those features that are in a typical CAM program, we just use the AutoCAD version of those right with the router sim integrated right inside of it. So I got my single part programs all in here. I've got my nested sheets here. I've also got the nest drawings that are saved. And these nest drawings, again, these are the... Uh, parts with the 3D solids 
Again, I can view it from different angles. Here's my summary of my different sheet sizes. So I used five sheets of 4 by 8 and two sheets of 5 by 10 and one sheet of 5 by 12. I also had a cost associated with each one of those sheets. And I can put filler quantities on the parts as well. Now what I've got here is what's called a tool stay down nest, which is actually much more efficient for cycle times compared to traditional methods. If I pick the tool path up and move it, you'll see there's just one lead in and one lead out, and it's a ramping motion. RouterSim does everything with a helical motion or ramp motion. It's going to save your tool and your spindle bearings. We lead in and lead out, and all the parts are connected with an overlapping bridge here. So this is one big tool path where all the parts, the tool stays down and connects from part to part without lifting up. That reduces the cycle time dramatically. Okay. Uh, here we've got some part inside a part nesting. These two parts fit inside this opening. And even those have a tool stay down nest as well. So if I pick these up, I'm just going to move them so you can see what we have here. And um, here's the inside cuts if I just highlight it. You can see that that leads in, connects to this part, overlaps, connects to this part. So it's uh, there's a there's you can see how we're doing an overlap, and the overlap's important so you can use your cutter compensation. So this tool stay down nest can actually use cutter comp because of that overlap. One lead in, one lead out, makes everything cut about 20% faster than traditional methods. So I've got each one of my sheets. Again, I can move these nests around, change them uh, any way I want. I can insert or draw new pieces of geometry here. So I want to add some new uh, drawing segments or a new component. I can either drag and drop using Windows Explorer. So we can, um, let me see if I go and I pick some drawings from another job here. I'll just drag one of these pieces in here. And it's kind of an odd shape part. See if there's room for it on any of these sheets here. I can put it right here. I'm going to drop that part right there. So I just use drag and drop to add this component to the job. Or I could just draw something, okay? If I want to draw, I have the line command, circle, arc. And again, the AutoCAD version of those commands, more powerful than anyone else's version of those commands. I can even have little problems with the drawing. If you get drawings from somebody else, a lot of times they'll have breaks or gaps in the geometry. You can see here I've made a, a very small 2,000s by 3,000s gap in that geometry. Well, RouterSim will go ahead and fix that for us automatically. So I'm going to activate the, the software and use it in an interactive mode again, just like last time. We're going to cut things interactively. And uh, I'm going to use this step called GeoShape, which takes whatever you select, and it glues it together into a continuous polyline. It glues it back together again. So I'm going to geoshape on these segments here and allow me to pick where I want my start point to be, where I want my tool path to, to lead in and lead out. And you can pick that wherever you want. I have different knowledges set up. Here's a knowledge with a 3 8 bit. It's got rank 100. There's different machining cycles. So you save your machining operations you set this screen up one time, and you can use these over and over in other drawings. Okay, so here's here's my uh, outside cut, and here it's cutting through the material three thousandths. If I want to put a specific value, I could put a specific value here. I have a depth per pass too, which is like your your uh, step down increment. The feed rate, spindle speed. You can make a cut, touch the shape. I'll grab both of these outside shapes and make my helical lead on the toolpath. There you can see where I lead in and lead out. And that geometry was fixed within a tolerance. It went ahead and fixed that geometry by itself. I just moved it using the move command so you could see how it fixed it within its own tolerance. Now, a lot of CAM systems can fix that. But here I fixed it in my drawing. I fixed it in the source. It's fixed all the way through. It fixes it for you automatically. Here's a lead in and lead out that's a helic right, helical motion right along the edge of the geometry there. You see how the tool is ramping in overlapping and then coming out right along the edge. It keeps the tool from moving, okay? It keeps it from moving out of that geometry. It's much more efficient type of use. Here's an inside cut. And if I leave the depth blank, then it will cut to how deep you've actually drawn your geometry. So it'll make a tool path to the depth that the drawing is drawn at, okay? So if I make that cut here on these things, when I got the 3D solids, you could see it picked up the depth from that 3D cut.
okay so it picked up the depth for this keyway slot and it went to this level here okay so you've got your your different geometries um, when you're ready you could resequence the tool paths make a new program if you want there's that sequence button again you can either pick the order yourself or put a window around it all sort the order make the report give me a new program a new cycle time four minute cycle time on that one and a new g-code file so you can resequence cuts very quick very easy that's an interactive method uh, again I got all these results in just a few clicks the other uh, the other results that are in here is labels so Routerson made a full label program for you it comes with Avery labeling you got up to 13 text fields and two picture files so it puts a picture of every part on there and a barcode label you can make labels for each individual part or each g-code file they're automatic and we save you can make new labels okay using any of the Avery label designs you've got hundreds of label sizes if you want to use these little labels maybe you just pick and fit and choose which fields you want on the labels or you can use a small font and get all of them on there so that comes with it uh, there's also a, a text file we make the labels as a common delimited file you can import into any labeling program uh, also stored in here is a summary report for the entire job which gives you uh, yields and uh, area scrap area and part area for each of the different materials so this is very good for your material utilization I get all this automatically literally from just a few clicks from the SolidWorks file so keep that in mind that the automation of router sim is really its strength that you can automate things completely all my results are saved here they're all in a folder ready to go out to the router we even make a schedule file if your machine supports DNC schedule you can run this schedule file and then you just keep pushing the green button it'll make new programs for you one after another that's the router sim from SimTech with solid sim cutting from SolidWorks assemblies please give us a call if you have any questions and take a look at our website sim-tech.com thank you